everyone here. We're going through the Gospel of Mark. We're going to be in Mark chapter 3 today. And um, and so, so let's see here. What, I'm, a, I'm a little disheveled from what I normally am because I was having tech issues. The, um, the, and uh, so, so, so let's see. So just to catch, catch everyone up where we are, we're going through the Gospel of Mark. In the beginning of Mark, um, the, the Gospel writer is, is creating a story that is telling you that Jesus is set apart and, and, and bigger and kind of the way I used to put it is like the, he is the one. He is, he is the one that's, that's come, that people are saying that he's speaking in uh, special ways, that he's speaking in um, ways that are, have authority that no one else has. Uh, he, even the demons, even the evil bodies and all that stuff, even the demons are recognizing who he is and what, and what he is doing. And he also is uh, forgiving sins and kind of sh showing us the kingdom of God breaking in. That we see that this, this guy is um, kind of set apart and kind of different than, than everyone else is. And also we're seeing kind of a different pattern, a different path than what we typically would see. Uh, so like um, the, the, the demons are like, oh, but you're Jesus. And he tells them not to, to, not to say anything about him, which is, which is interesting. Uh, he, we, he healed a man with leprosy and told him not to tell anyone about it. About the, that's, that's, and that's odd. That's odd things. And there's multiple different reasons why that could be. Uh, but that's, that's kind of odd. And uh, this, last, this last week, we saw that he's, he's now hanging out with people he shouldn't be hanging out with. He's hanging out with tax collectors and sinners. And whenever you hear that about tax collectors and sinners, that, that is like tax collectors, especially during this time, are the people that have sold out to the Roman government. They have sold out to, to, um, to, yeah, to the Roman government, to, to, to them. They are collecting money for the baddies that are around. Cheryl, I'm having technology problems, so you're not gonna be able to hear everyone else today. You, you, you. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. That, that's, because the sound system's not on right now. So that's because we were having issues. So you're just hearing my voice. So that's um, so. So it's just going to be a little different because we're having some technology issues in the back. Um, so, so, uh, so that's kind of where we are. So we left off with Jesus saying that he's the Lord of the Sabbath. Oh, a story about oh. his his disciples um, as they're walking along, picking grain grain heads to eat. And, and the uh, Pharisees are like pushing up their glasses. Mm, you guys can't do that. Like that's not, that's not allowed. And, and Jesus goes, well, you guys were sure big on David and he and his soldiers did it. And, um, and so, so that's, that's where we are. So we'll begin with uh, Mark chapter three, verse one. So here, here we go. Another time Jesus went into the synagogue and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. And Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, stand up in front of everyone. All right, so we can already see what's going on, right? We can already see that these Pharisees are all like, mm, like I don't know if I'd do that, like, and they're all watching him. They're not there to actually pay attention to him, right? They're not there to actually learn anything. They're not there to follow him. They're there to trap him. All right, that like that's that is clear here, and that's clear as we as we go forward. So they they are being they are being Satan in this instance, right? They're they're accusing there, and maybe we shouldn't do that. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Just stand and try to trap people. So. So here we go. So verse four, then Jesus asked them, which is lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save a life 
or to kill. But they all stayed silent. They all stayed silent, right? And he, and he looked, they didn't want to answer the question because they're more interested in trapping him. And he looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts and said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out and his hand was completely restored. And the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. Okay, so this little section here, does, it, does that stand out in any way to anyone? Did something stand out to anybody? What'd you say? There's silence. There's, okay. So Cheryl says the silence when, when Jesus asked them the question of what you should do on the Sabbath, do good or bad. Yeah. Anything, anything else? Yeah. It kind, it kind of sounds, sounds like. Here, hold on, hold on, Midge. I'll get you, I'll get to you next. We got two people talking. We got Jack. Okay. So, so he's saying that the Pharisees knew that Jesus was right. The, uh, and that. So, so, but they hated him so much. They, so they knew he was right, but they were, they hated him so much that they were, um, they were shut, they were shut off to, to, to knowing that. Um, I, I think, I, I think, I think that like, like that, that is, that is, that is a good description. Cause I think, I think a lot of times we become so angry and entrenched in our own power systems mm -hmm. that we can, that we can't see something else going around, you know, like we, we become so entrenched into what is giving us that feeling of power that we can't see something on the other side. Like that's, yeah. Like, I think, I think that's I think that's a good warning for even us, right? All these years politics has not changed. All these years and politics hasn't changed is what Ed said. Yeah. M Midge, I cut you off. Did you wanna did you wanna say something? Well basically it was just that they were hoping that a better option would come up than what they had in front of them. Okay, that's interesting. So she said that there <coughs> everyone's hoping that uh, there would be there'd be a better option that would come up. As Ed um, said, it's 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 sort of like what politics and people do in this day and age. Yeah. Well, I think I think also you have established power, and wherever you have established power, whenever someone comes and bucks up against that, you're you're going to you're going to have people that are angry. Right. And that's and that's the nature of politics. That's the nature of politics like that. So, so you have this, you know, you have established power and you buck up against it. You're, you're going you're going to you're going to run into that. So the uh, so so that's and there's that's that's just the, that's just the nature of it. So and so I think these Pharisees have a pretty sweet deal going on. And I, I think our if we just keep it in the church realm, I think it's, it's the way like church churches are too i mean you think about the the juggernaut of that is like american church and 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 the the amount of capital that flows through it and and like you, you see that there there are churches out there that that fall under the um the nonprofit banner but are doing things and uh, i mean they're basically like venues where where there's you know, the performances and all these different, different things. And they're nonprofit. They don't even have to pay taxes on these things. And, and you kind of look around and it's like, well, are you guys, are, are you guys a net good to society or are you just profit seeking? You know, like, and so, and I think that's a question that we, all of us in churches have to answer, answer to that. It's, are we, the reason why we're nonprofit is because we're a net good in society. We don't have to pay taxes, but we're providing good to society around us. And so like, so these Pharisees are obviously, Jesus is probably getting in the way of their power. And, and they are like freaking out about it, freaking out about it. So, 
All right. Does anyone else have, have anything you'd like to say about, about that? The, so, so we see that, and he does it on the Sabbath, um, and that's, that's kind of continuing the Sabbath. Oh, well, let's talk about this, too. So Jesus says, it is lawful, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or evil, to save a life or to kill? What's interesting there is Jesus is equating what he's doing to that man as saving a life. You see what he's doing there? He's, he's equating, even though he hasn't done it yet, he's, he's obviously equating the fact that he is um, you know, healing the man's arm, that that's, that's saving his life and doing good. Right? So, so that, that, is, that is an interesting thing. And I think that we should pay attention to that. And I think that this tradition kind of coming from the church, the church has always been one that's been kind of about healing and nurturing. And, you know, we have a, even a hundred years ago, we have a strong tradition of hospitals uh, in, in the church. We've, we've lost that tradition, I think, for profit seeking means, but uh, we won't go there. They, um, that we've, that we have, but we've have always been big into healthcare and making, making sure people are taken care of in the church. So, so, um, so let's 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 go on. So the, then, verse six. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians as to how they might kill him. The Herodians are those like kind of elders of Herod type of thing, and so they 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 realize that their power structure is being messed with, and here they are. They've been looking for Jesus for a way to catch Jesus, and here they are. It's just being said in black and white now. All right. So let's let's go on. So number seven, uh, verse seven. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake, and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard about all that he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea. I don't know, and the regions across Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Because the crowd, he, because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him to keep the people from crowding him. For he had healed many, so that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the impure spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. But he gave them strict orders not to tell others about it. Okay, like, so what 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 stands out to there? Does that stand does that stand out in any way to anyone? Okay, okay so share. So the, the uh, Cheryl's notes the uh, the demons uh, saying the evil spirits saying that you are the son of God. He tell them don't tell others about him. Right? Yeah, yeah. So he says. He says that here. That's it's 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 kind of wild. Yeah. Oh man, oh man, phones ringing. <laughs> the uh, so so what what else what else is going? What else do you think? Because I could talk about it, but if anyone noticed anything interesting, we can talk about. It. So, so I I think it's interesting at how. How this shows how people are going after Jesus. That they are just completely like just smitten with him. They're they're going out there. We're gonna see that here in a little bit. Um how how he's going to um break the loaves and the fishes. And people are out there and they're hungry and they don't have anything to eat, and they're just going out there. And you could see also concern that Jesus has that people that are hurting in ways that they're that they have no means of um, that uh, you know, that Jesus is their means of healing that they are like pushing forward in front of everyone and they're and they're all just crowding on Jesus so much so that he can probably can't preach anymore and he tells his disciples to have a boat so that I can get away from the people it's in, it's interesting that's a that's a weird kind of flavor it makes sense when you just look at it at the first cursory glance, you're like, okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. But it's, it's this, it's almost like this chaotic scene where the people are just pressing on Jesus so much. He's, he's got to get like 
in the boat away from the shore just so just so he can get away from the people it's it, you know it's an incredible incredible story and that's 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 kind of what was going on there and they and they start talking about all these places where they're coming from and um they're just kind of coming from all over the region to see him. Okay, so does that, does anyone have any, any questions or statements about that section? Yeah, Cheryl? Yeah, with the, with the evil spirit saying that he is, he is the son of God. Yeah, that he, he, he has come from the father, the, the creator of all there. Yeah, so that's, they are definitely... They, they're they're definitely it's it's another statement of about about who he is so good deal so verse 13 let's go on jesus went up to a mountainside all right before we read this this section here is going to especially if you were a good hebrew especially during this time if you're a good hebrew this section is going to remind you of a few things. We're going to read this section, and I'm going to see if, it remi- if, it, if you can pick out what I think it should remind you of. All right? So here, here we go. So verse 13. Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted. And he called to him, and he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. These were the 12 appointed. Simon, who he gave the name Peter. Mark is Peter's story. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. To them he gave the name uh, Bonerges, I don't know, which means son of thunder. And Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who would betray him. Okay, there's a couple things there that should stand out. That Can you guess? It looks like it's just a list of names, but can you guess what I'm thinking of? Do, do what? So, so Gloria said the 12 tribes. So you know the 12 tribes of Israel? Like yeah, yeah. So so that's that's a big one. That's a big one because what we see, especially in Hebrew thought, is that Hebrew thought isn't linear. Like we tell stories and like the first thing happened and the second thing happened, the third thing happened, the fourth thing happened. But when you we actually hear good stories and Hebrew does this big time, that when when you're going forward, it keeps calling back. It keeps calling back. It moves forward by going backwards, kind of in these circular motions. And so Jesus' story, a lot of the stuff sounds familiar in the Jesus story. So like he wanders around in the wilderness for 40 days. That's a call back to, the, to God's people wandering around the wilderness for 40 years, right? So all of a sudden he calls out 12 disciples, which... Yeah, why did he choose 12? Why is he 12? Well, it's kind of obvious. Like he's choosing 12 because, because there were 12 tribes of Israel. That, we, that, that all of this is happening again. And it's basically calling back. It's like, hey, remember the last time God saved his people? Remember when, when he took us out of Egypt and brought us into the promised land? And there were 12 tribes. Of Israel? Like it's happening again. Okay? So that's... The 12 tribes is there. So, so then the thing to remember is we, talk, we made this joke last time, but uh, I'll make it again. How many Jehovah's Witnesses are there in heaven? 144,000. 144,000, 144, right? Now, that's a, that's, that's a joke because that's a number in Revelation, 144,000. But do, do you remember how we got, how the Bible gets to that number? 12 times 12 times 12 times 12 12 times 12 so you have the you have the whole old covenant or the whole old you know whole side of things and you have the whole new covenant so 12 times 12 and whenever you add a 10 a times 10 like it's like it's like putting an exclamation point so the the, the, the 144,000 is like yes uh-huh yeah right that that's that's how you're supposed to read that so it's everyone 
It's all of God's people in the, in the past, present, future is what that 144,000 means. And so, and we're seeing that being created here in the disciples because the disciples represent the church. Okay. There's there another any, indica any indication of why he changed the names of some of these, some of the apostles? I think, I think he changed the name. So like Peter means the rock and he kind of almost comically calls him that later, you know, with Petros. Um, and the other ones, um, I, I think it's, it, it's, so you have like James, son of Zebedee and, and his brother, and he calls them the sons of thunder. Like it's, I, I don't know. I should study that more, but, um, but I think, let's see. In my, in my Bible, my Bible doesn't have anything on it. I, I haven't really studied that too much. I probably should to see why he called them sons of thunder. Um, if I go off the top of my head, it may be um, like a mockery of some of the, the, the Greek and Roman gods going on. The definition for, is it Boneragus? Yeah, I have no idea. I is a preacher it. or orator. A preacher or, can you guys hear? O-R-A-T-O-R, -O -R, orator. So, so, so that Bogeritus is, um, means preacher or orator, which that would right. make sense with Sons of Thunder. And so they could have been good preachers, you know? And so I think some of this is a callback to as, as these gospels were being translated around, you got, you got to remember that these Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John aren't the only stories of Jesus that are being told. You know, they, they, this isn't the only thing that there would have been other traditions even before these are written. In fact, Mark and, and, and Matthew and Luke and John that like they're collections of, of stories. U usually they're collections of things. That's why uh, like Mark and Matthew are look pretty similar. And so, so we, when you, when you think about that, so they could be clarifying. It's like, you, you all know these guys by this name. But this is what they were called originally, you know. So it could be like some some of these Christian traditions are are really know them by these other names, and so kind of combining them there. And and also just like there's a big like you look at the Old Testament with Abram and you know Jacob and all the all these all these things. There's a big history of of people's names changing. So, so, so that's, and uh, the kind of, kind of go forward. So, so yeah, so that, that's, I think it's just kind of all part of that. I, I really don't know that. That's just me thinking off the top of my head. That's good. Okay. Can you guys guess the other thing? There was one other one. The 12, the 12 is the big one. Yeah, Cheryl. He gave them power to cast out demons. That's not the one I'm thinking of, but he gave them power to cast out demons. Yes, yes. There's another big one. Think back to the uh, Exodus, wandering around in the wilderness when the 12 tribes were created. We're, they went to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Big mountain of God. Sinai. Right? So all of a sudden, think about, think about what's happening here. Suddenly, Jesus, in the story here, Jesus walks up a mountain... And whenever you hear anyone walking up a mountain in the scriptures, like you got to start thinking, like thinking of Moses going up there and all that stuff. And then he creates, he, he calls, he, he, he labels the 12, all that stuff. That's a big deal. Is that part of that recirculating there? It's like, oh, this all is happening again, right? We're seeing this is how God saves his people. This is how God saves his people. It's calling, it's calling back to that. It's calling back. So, so that's that's what we have here. So I don't know. Any any other things? All right, let's continue on. So G, uh, so verse twenty. Then Jesus entered a house, and again the crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his when his uh, family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said he is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebub, 
by the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. All right, we're about to get into a, a, um, a very famous quote. Um, someone in the American history quoted what's a, what, what I'm about to read. So see if you guys can remember who it is. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes, opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. All right, let's stop, let's stop right there for, for a second. So I, I, re I read it. Who, who quoted it in American history this verse? One of, the, one of the verses I just read. You guys Lincoln. know? Yeah, Lincoln. Lincoln. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Cannot stand. Lincoln, Lincoln quoted that. So we're going to find out today if he took it out of context or not. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, so so uh, the, if, if you're asking me about it out of context, it's, it's probably always yes for me. So it's, but, um, but so, so he, let's, so let's, let's break this down and get to the point where we are because the place where I stopped right after that is a, is a very curious set of verses that I've heard probably five different meanings on, but it also could mean two big things. And I'm going to get your guys' opinion about what you think it is, but we're going to, we're going to get there here in a second. So Jesus entered a house, and again, the crowd gathered and all that stuff, and his family is kind of upset about all of this, like Jesus isn't even eating, all that, and, um, and, and, they, and they said that he is out of his mind. So the whole, like, uh, prophet has no honor in his hometown, I think we're starting to see some of that right there. By the way, my, my parents think this about me, he's out of his mind, so that's the, uh, that, that's it's a joke. It's a joke. But it's true. Is it? Yeah, is it? <laughs> that's 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 said like someone who has been around me a lot. The uh, <laughs> You got that right. Yeah. <laughs> so so they, they, they said it is it. So and the teachers of the law, let's see here. And the teacher of the law who came down from Jerusalem said. He is possessed by Beelzebub, by the prince of demons. He is driving out demons. Where are these people from? Where, where, are, these, where are these Pharisees from? It says it right there at the beginning of this. They're from Jerusalem. Mm. They're from Jerusalem. Yeah. So, so like, think, think about that. Like, let's say if... I was spitting some hot heresy out here every week, and and all of the, and this is like before video. Like anyone can watch my stuff now. It's all out there now. Now, <laughs> but but um, but let's say if I'm spitting out some hot heresy and all that stuff, and then suddenly like maybe my the district president comes down to to listen to kind of what I'm teaching, or or maybe like an official from Senate comes in. It's like, ooh, is there is there issues here? Is there issues here? Like, it's interesting that it says that these people are now, so it's gotten past just Galilee now, and it's going up into Jerusalem that people now are paying attention to Jesus, right? So, and notice what they're doing. They're yelling out dissenting things. He's from Beelzebub. And with the prince of demons, like with 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 Satan himself is what we'd probably call him like today, even that even though that means accuser. Um, he he by by evil's power he is driving out evil, is is what he's saying, right? And Jesus, I, I imagine Jesus is like, oh guys, come on, like quit being quit being ridiculous. He's like, how in the world, how in the world can the accuser Satan drive out? The accuser, like, like, if a kingdom divided against itself, 
you know, it cannot stand. That kingdom cannot stand. Like he's, he's saying that why in the world then would, would, um, would this evil kingdom stop evil in the world? Like why in the world would that happen? Like it's, so, so Jesus in that quote is talking about like evil kingdoms and stuff like that. I don't think that's how Abraham Lincoln was using it. I think he was, I think he was doing it other things, right? <laughs> And so, so it's, but, but it's, but how, how in the world, like, you know, um, if, if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. You know, if he's trying to kill himself, his whole end has come. So like, it's this whole idea of, of this struggle and saying like, you guys are trying to make negative times negative equals a positive. And he goes, it doesn't. It doesn't in this case. It's more of a negative plus a negative type of thing. All right, let's go into this next section. We'll read it carefully, beginning with verse 27. In fact, no one can enter, no one can enter a strong man's house without first trying, tying him up. Let me read that again. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. All right, we're going to get into that in a second. So, in fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Who is the strong man? Who is the strong man? Who do you think Jesus is talking about? Who is the strong man? So Cheryl is saying Rome. So who's doing the tying up? Then who's? So you're saying Rome. That's that's an interesting. That's an interesting one. So you think it's Rome? Do you have any? <clears throat> think you want to say more on that? Okay. So Cheryl says Rome. That's a theory I've heard before. I mean, that's a theory I've heard before. Like I said, there's like five different things. I tell you the confirmation students didn't say Rome, so you get a gold star for that, Cheryl. I do this. We're, the confirmation students are, are a week ahead of you guys. So um, they, they didn't say that. So Could, what, it be Jesus? Could it be Jesus? So Jesus is the strong man? So, so the one tying him up is, is like, like evil, kind of Satan, Beelzebub, you know, something like that. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Like that. That is another. That is another theory. Do you, you want to speak any more to that at all? Why, why you think may think that? You don't have to. I'm just asking. No. Okay. No, thank you. And, and um, all right. So we have right now. We have the strong man could be Rome. We have the, the theory of the strong man um, is is Jesus. That that one that Ed just said. And I see your hand, Jack. And, and that, that one that Jesus just, uh, Jesus, Ed, I called you Jesus. I, I just, it's, it's, the, it's the aura. <laughs> the, um, the, the, the Ed just said um, is probably the more prevalent one that I've heard. And, then, and Jack, what do, you, what do you think? Jesus was doing this very thing when he freed people from Satan's control. So, so, so he, tied he was up reading, he was, Jack was reading out of a commentary there and, and you're agreeing with Ed that you think it's, can, can you summarize that just a little bit so I can summarize it? Okay, so 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 you're almost kind of connecting it to the cross type of type of idea, almost. Okay, so 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 Jack is saying that in Christ's actions that he thinks that the 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 strong man he's saying that Jesus is the strong man, right? And 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 uh, that that by Christ's actions you can kind of kind of see that, and almost like a foreshadowing of the cross or something like that. Okay, that that's one I hear um, the most. There's there's another there's 
there's another big one now. There's another big one. Can anyone guess what that one is? Who is the strong man? It's a glorious talk. So the the so okay, that's 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 interesting. So so you're saying the strong man is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay, so so it, it's so she's saying that the strong man is the is the is uh, the Holy Spirit, and these things should be attributed to Holy Spirit. But evil is is being a, is almost like it's like trying to plunder. Okay. All right. So there, there. So everyone is saying that the good things that he is doing is actually done by the is is done. That's a really good theory, uh, Gloria. So so what Gloria is saying is that there that all of this goes back to them saying that Jesus is Beelzebub, and and she's saying that they're actually denying the Holy Spirit, which we're going to get to here in a second. That the that they're actually blaspheming against the Holy Spirit and saying that what the Holy Spirit is doing is actually evil right so that's 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 a really good theory i had i hadn't i don't i like that that's that that's a that's a good collect collective that's a good collective in there this this verse gets picked apart and whoever you ask has a different version of it so um so does anyone anyone else want to venture a guess there's one more gloria's is really close to the one i'm kind of thinking of that hasn't been said yet so, so it's that the strong man is actually Jesus and that he is coming to plunder the house of, of the evil man that, that, you know, that he's coming to plunder Satan, basically, that he's coming in to take everything that you think that I come as Beelzebub, but in fact, I'm actually coming to plunder him, right? Like the end, and we kind of see that it kind of goes forward in how he's driving out demons and and giving giving his disciples um, uh, the power to drive out demons and all that stuff. So the four the four the four things that we saw was was Rome, which that's not that, that's that, yeah I've heard that before. Um, Rome, uh, we had that it was uh, Satan himself, uh, um, Satan himself, and then it was the strong man that's trying to take overtake Jesus. Then we had the Holy Spirit, and we kind of connect that with our next verse that they are actually blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. And then, um, and then, and then, the last one we mentioned was that the strong man is Jesus, and he's overpowering, overpowering Jesus. the The reason why I like I like this section so much about that is that I have heard people that I respect their opinions in theology all argue for a lot of those. Right. And so so it's and so like I I like the one where um, Jesus is the strong man plundering, plundering evil. But I like Gloria's a lot now, too. <laughs> like that's like that. That's where it's the Holy Spirit. And we'll get into that uh, right now. So. Um, so verse 28. So truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and even slander they utter, all right? But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. Okay, so verse 29, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, for they are guilty of eternal sin. What, what are things that you have heard about this before? I think Gloria really nailed that one already. Like I think, and we're going to flesh that out a little bit more. But um, ha has anyone heard any any kind of maybe when you were younger you understood this verse a certain way? Does anyone ha does anyone understand my question? Like, what do you think blaspheming the Holy Spirit is? Denying Jesus. Here, Here hold on. Yeah. So, so it's um, so Gloria said that she was always told that it was um, 
you said like that faith is kind of created by the Holy Spirit and that when you go against faith, that when, when, when you're going against that and that you're blaspheming against the Holy Spirit then like that's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that, that's that. Yeah. So you're, you're taught that that's that, that I think that's pretty, pretty orthodox even, even to this day type of thing. So Ed, you were, you were in the middle of saying something and I stopped you. Denying Jesus. Denying Jesus. So very, very similar to what Gloria just said, right? Like, so that's, right. yeah, so that, so, so denying, denying who Jesus is and, and all that. I got a question from someone in email a month ago about this, about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. This is stuff that people really worry about. They really, they're like, oh man, because, and this is like, I, I, I joke around, but this is like the big youth to, youth, youth group verse. Like uh, people discuss and all that stuff. They're like, oh man, what can you do? That not even Jesus will forgive you, and I, <laughs> all all of that stuff. And and I do think it's it's connecting to to um, that that idea of of um, rejecting rejecting the family of God. And, and the and the way that I the way that I put it is. So like lately in the sermon series, we've been doing this thing about the party. And if you can't tell, the overarching thing, in the, of the, the overarching idea of the whole sermon series is that the father is outside beckoning the older son to come into the party. It's coming into the party. And the, that parable never gets, um, never gets an ending to it. Jesus leaves it hanging. It's like, well, did he go in the party or not? <laughs> right? And so... So, um, so I, I think this is kind of that same thing. Like, so I, I compare it to Thanksgiving. So many of you are parents and, you know, if, if you had a son or a, or a daughter who have just like, I don't want to have anything to do with you. I don't want, I don't want anything to do with you at all. Like over there, like if they called you up, like, I, I doubt that they, that if they, if you guys started talking and they, they wouldn't be invited over for Thanksgiving, right? Like so, like I think there's there's an inherent familyness that is kind of, and it may and it may be difficult, but oftentimes like we're the ones that are keeping keeping ourselves out of the party, as as I, as I put it here, and so I think then that's kind of part of that blaspheming of the, of the Holy spirit. But what I think is also interesting is what Gloria said. And that's saying that saying the things of God are evil. I think that's, that's interesting thing. Interesting too. Um, so like whenever we, we say that someone's sins are forgiven and then someone goes, Nope, that can't happen. They've done something just too bad. You know, like that, that's, uh, that's coming down harder on something than, uh, that I'm really almost willing to do. But I think that's, that's kind of part of it. But I think the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit isn't something that we really have to worry about. I, I don't think it's, it's something we have to really, because it, it makes sense when you're going, well, I'm removing myself from God and his care. And the thing is that, that we end up seeing, and we're actually going to see in the very next next week, is that God ends up going and looking for all of those that are lost anyway. You know, uh, there's a there's a uh, theologian by the name of John Stott that calls Jesus the Hound of Heaven, the Hound of Heaven, kind of looking looking for all of those. And so what what I think is happening a lot of times in the Gospels is that things are said that are uncomfortable and then there's kind of a pullback that we end up seeing that there is salvation in here the whole i think and i think that's the whole point of the cross i think that i think the gospels are trying to get us to the point where it's like i can't do this on my own i can't do this and then we see god's love for us yeah jack He's talking about preaching the gospel to people that are like atheists and so. 
Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just keep on going. Yeah. So, so he's talking about people that just have a hatred towards God, and sometimes you can just sense that. And, and so he's asking, how how can you break that wall of people's hatred? Um, I I I I I don't know, especially right now. I think it's it's different. I think it's different for everyone. I, I think it's um, I think it's living a life of, of gracefulness and forgiveness. Um, but like when you do that, you're just going to get enemies with the pious. But um, but th- that's you, you, that that I think I think that that's kind of the the best that you're still showing them love no matter what. I think is is kind of is kind of the way, and that's kind of what we end up seeing with with Jesus. So Cheryl, you had a question uh-huh. or a statement. Say, if the opportunity hasn't come yet. The Holy Spirit hasn't provided the opportunity to change them or mm-hmm. impress upon them. Faith. So she she's saying that maybe the Holy Spirit hasn't really impressed on them faith yet. I that that could be like I, I'm always uncomfortable with putting. Uh, qualifiers on God's power and what he has or hasn't done yet. Like I'm, I'm always really weird. And also declaring where people are, you know, it's like, Ooh, that person, they're going to the bad place. Like, like John, you got a black t-shirt. You're going to the back the bad place today. You know, like that's, if you'd worn a red one, you would have been fine. You know, like that's, yeah. <laughs> but that's like, I'm uncomfortable doing that. Um, so, so, uh, so I try to kind of always kind of give people good news. All right, let me finish this up. We, we're, we're just over time. Let me finish this up. So we got to go anyway. My computer's going to die. So uh, all right. Well, it's gonna, thanks, like, thanks for joining us. I'm just going to read the next like four verses. You can do that too. I'm not going to talk about it. See you next week. See, See you next week. week. Bye bye. Bye. So, so he said this because they were saying he had an impure spirit, which is really interesting with your with your um, uh, and then Jesus mother and brothers arrived standing outside so we go back to his mothers and brothers standing outside and sent someone to call to him and a crowd was sitting around him and they told him look your mom and your brothers are outside looking for you Jesus then goes who are my my mother and my brothers then he looked around and seated at the circle around him here are my mother and brothers Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Maybe we'll have to pick up, man, next week's going to be thick. We may have to pick up on that next week, but who are my brothers, sisters, and mothers like over there? That should make us all incredibly uncomfortable. Like, because, like, the American church is obsessed with family. We have placed family in the middle of everything that we do, right? And here Jesus is blowing it up, right? Like, so that's, that, that, that should, that should, this is one of those times where it's like, ooh, that's different. That's different. So, so, um, but yeah, maybe we'll talk a little bit about that before we get into the sower next week. Um, I'm going to tell you that the sower is going to be going on for quite some time because I think Jesus and the gospel of Mark is talking about the sower all the way to the middle of chapter six. And so I think, and you guys have probably heard me preach on that before and talk about it. It's actually what I'm going to talk about at LWML. And so, so, um, but yeah, that's, that's where we'll finish today. Good job thinking about everything everyone every today with that one fun one there in the middle of uh, chapter three so um but it's great seeing everyone um so ed and joanne joanne's got another uh surgery coming up Tuesday. she's got another surgery coming up and that's on her eye correct all right left, uh, left eye has a hemorrhage so her left that, eye has a hemorrhage um that's affecting her eyesight and that eye pretty drastically and yeah. they can't tell if there's 
a start, if it's starting to tear the retina or if it's just a burst blood vessel and nothing else. Mm. So, so it could be a options were to wait and see if the blood dissolves and what it might be or to go in and remove the blood and then see if there's any anything else. So so yeah, so we're we're um we'll, we'll, continue, we'll continue to keep you guys in the prayers. Yeah, so they have she's she's having operation in her eye because there's like a blood issue, like a hemorrhage and they don't really know what's going on in it. Do what? Is that the side with the cochlear? Yes. Yes, Cheryl, it is. And yeah. the cochlear doctor said in their 35 years, they've never had any issue with the eye as a result of the cochlear surgery. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's, I mean, you know, it's, so, well, hopefully it's not connected to that. I, I, it, it probably isn't. It's pretty far back, but your eyes go go way in there but uh but um but yeah so hopefully uh that surgery goes goes on um and it's uneventful yep yep yeah, we pray but we'll keep you in prayer uh keep gloria's um family in prayer she's got two people kind of struggling with cancer at the moment mm-hmm. in her family and so so keep keep them in your prayers too so that that's but uh, but it's great great having everyone here. Thanks for coming today. Thank you. That stuff. And may God bless and keep you all and open up your scriptures to you. Thank all you. Right. We'll see you. Thank you. Bye.